answer the question of how you feel, the brain has developed a network called the limbic system. How you feel does not only mean feeling happy or sad, but maybe you feel thirsty or hungry, which are essential for survival. The limbic system also influences what you remember. When a certain event has strong emotional connection, whether positive or negative, you're more likely to remember it. This includes fear, knowing what you should fear and quickly recognizing biological changes in your body that indicate fear could save your life. This is handled by a small almond shaped part of the limbic system called the amygdala. It lies at the base of the brain, not too far from the ears, and what it does is receive information from many brain regions, your internal organs, and external sensory systems such as your eyes and ears for receiving light and sound data. It integrates all of this information and assigns a level of emotional significance to what is going on. Kind of like having a list of movies that you like and assigning a rating of 1 to 10 to each of these movies, or which movie is more emotionally significant for you. When you're alone and hear unfamiliar sounds in the dark, it initiates a fear response such as panic or anxiety and activates appropriate bodily systems to prepare you for unforeseen situations by releasing hormones. It can be a real threat or perceived imaginary threat, but the amygdala is just doing its job to save your ass and it's very good at what it does. Sometimes it becomes overly productive which leads to chronic anxiety, but if you think from amygdala's perspective, it's not so bad, it's just trying to protect you. In response to some ambiguous or unfamiliar stimuli, we become vigilant and pay close attention to what is happening around us. The amygdala takes all sensory information it can and compares it with what you already know and almost always reaches the same conclusion, be afraid. If anything is unfamiliar, your limbic system will mark it as potentially dangerous and if you keep thinking something is potentially dangerous, you're more likely to survive. However, it does not consider the long-term consequence of chronic anxiety by overreacting to trivial stimuli and is only acting so you can pass on your be afraid first genes to the next generation. Consider the situation. You're walking down a certain path and you've heard rumors about a wild animal attacking humans. You hear rustling in the bushes and your fight or flight response to this potential threat is activated immediately increasing your heart rate, respiration and blood pressure. You then realize it's just a cat. So everything that your body did to prepare you for this so-called threat went to waste. Was this response from your body appropriate? It was because in order to survive your brain must anticipate threat and prepare your body for action instantly whether it is to fight or flee. You can't expect to start thinking and coming up with the best course of plan to approach the situation. You might be long dead by then. That's where evolution comes and says hold my beer and charges you up with adrenaline. So being frightened is actually pretty safe and good for the survival of your species but long-term stress can have negative impacts on the health. Amygdala plays a crucial role in this and also influences many other brain regions. For instance it activates the frontal lobe of the brain to increase vigilance to potential threats. The influence of amygdala makes memories more interesting or frightening than they actually are which makes you less likely to walk that alley alone. The amygdala also becomes active when other people are looking at us which is what causes the fear of public speaking. It is people's number one fear, even more than heights, deep water, death, loneliness and darkness. Neurons in amygdala pay attention to the eyes of other people to inform you if someone is staring at you. It is linked to staring at one's prey and is often a prelude to an attack. Therefore when an audience is looking at you, the amygdala is warning you of potential threat but you consciously know those people are just there to listen to you and not harm you. Even if something very non-threatening like a little girl holding her doll standing in front of you and staring at you constantly, how would that make you feel? Staring you and following you and you have no idea what she wants, now it seems like the doll is also staring at you. It feels threatening, right? We all would respond to fear to a similar situation, no matter how innocent the attacker might seem. Children with autism don't respond to staring. MRI scans of amygdala of these children show that they primarily focus on mouths of people and miss important social cues, like eye contact. Older people are also desensitized to social cues, whether threatening or not, which is because as we get older and have numerous experiences and varied emotional and fearful events, the frontal lobe gains more control over how the amygdala responds to the incoming sensor information. And studies show that people with thicker frontal lobes have greater ability to reduce activation in the amygdala.